Hello, this is segment three, um, and I thought it was gonna be the last segment, but I actually remembered there's one other piece that I wanted to do in this segment, but this is segment number three of my electronics tear apart videos. Um, it's just a standard printer, but it's been requested to see what is inside of a standard laser jet. Um, again, the purpose of these videos is educational for the most part, we are tearing apart different electronics. The metals that we are looking for today are copper and aluminum, so we can melt them down in our forge, um, and any other valuable metals that we can either sell or figure out what to do with in the future, such as gold and silver. And there may be some platinum-based metals as well. Okay, this dusty old thing, as you can read right on the front, it's a HP LaserJet. P1102 wireless or W. The easiest ones will be the components that you can just pull out. First off, for example, we've got we've got the spooler. There's going to be some gold plating right here, but you really don't want to mess with your toner cartridge. There really isn't going to be much else. There are some moving components, but they're not self-driving. So the motors are going to be inside your printer. If you open up a print toner cartridge, you are in for a dusting of black powder. So there's a few case screws on the back, a few across the bottom, and uh, some more on the bottom panel here, on the, bo the bottom plate. You can already tell it's gonna be a long day. Words are more difficult than usual. So we will do our best. This plastic siding is going to be in our way for a minute. So why don't we come back here to the back. We'll take off more of these and maybe the panels will come off and then this bottom plate will come off too. And we don't keep steel personally Steel is something that I'm not going to be able to melt in the forge and its value has gone through the floor. I don't have a buyer for the amount of steel that we come up with with, with these scrapping projects other than uh, a local metal recycling company who don't give me a ton for it, but they give me some. When in doubt, you just break it. There we go. Indeed it does. The front panel is now off. Nothing fancy. <laughs> the other piece of the plastic siding that we broke. Okay. Well, with that, we should just be able to pull this other side off. Put in the door there, there we go. And now let's go. And the bottom panel has volunteered itself as well. That is very nice. Now this is gonna be a steel panel. Nothing too fancy about it, so we're gonna put that in our steel collection. The rest of that bottom wants to come off, but it looks like it's being held on by something under there. Let's take a look. Are so good. Uh -huh. Okay, this tray, this is the paper feeder and envelope feeder as well. But there's nothing fancy about this. The reason why I wear gloves is for this part right here. These soldered pins are like little needles. And uh, as you can tell by the wear and tear on my gloves here, that uh, I've pulled apart enough of those where it has chosen to not hurt me. Not that it chooses. 
but I have protected myself against these pieces. Now that I've torn into this this far, I can tell that this printer is really just plastic and steel. There's not gonna be much else. I don't know where the wireless card it lives, where it exists, but I'm predicting it's not gonna have much by way of value either based off of what we're seeing here. Okay. And it looks like that could be a motor of some sort sitting down there. Powered cord here. So we could try this out by putting a power current, an electrical current on this wire. And uh, when we engage the current, I bet you it would close. And when we remove the power source, it would open again. That would be a, an interesting piece there. And uh, this is just the paper feeder. It pulls the paper across into the printer. One sheet at a time. That one off to the side. Okay. Let's see what's behind this panel over here. This will be the power management. The 120 volts comes in here and will be transformed down to a safe voltage for the electronic components within this printer. So this is probably a 120 down to maybe a 12 volt or a five volt. Um, but there's our transformer. We've got some capacitors in here, USB. soldered straight to the board. Now this one is pin. There's a slot down there. Okay, in here, we've got some really fine copper coils, one processor, nothing on the back, no gold components anywhere. You've got a button, got two buttons. Your USB might have some traces of gold plating, but it's going to be insignificant. You have three medium-sized MLCCs. You've got a whole bunch of tiny ones. Oh, you have two more over here. So you have five MLCCs. So this panel, it's not going to be very valuable, but that's probably one of the largest gold recovery options we have, other than what's going to be on this panel right here on this board. And there you have it. This actually is a HP wireless module. It's got some gold plating, very, very trace amount. This is really low quality. Um, you've got some MLCCs. You don't have any gold on their pins and you're gonna just have more MLCCs, really small ones underneath this little shielded jacket. So this, may have some very, very light trace amounts of gold. But again, there's hardly anything here. Now granted, there will be better quality printers, but this is the standard uh, $70, $80 consumer product that you'd buy anywhere from HP. They do make some pretty good printers. This just isn't one of their top of the line models. So, it doesn't surprise me that the components that make up this printer are not as valuable. So, right off, what I see, well, I'm trying to find a way of getting this off. It's let go everywhere except right here. It looks like there's a screw back there. Oh, I found one right here. All right, we have a cable that does not want to let go. We have all of those wires have come in, finally, from across the, the labyrinth of plastic. The heat roller right here, this orange roll, it heats up 
Now, I can't be sure if it's this one or the one that's on here, but I believe this is the one that heats up, and as the paper comes through, it ionizes and it charges the paper, and it pulls the one of the two rollers, whether it's this orange one or this blue one, will um, charge up the, the, the paper and get it, uh, get it to a state where it will pull the toner onto the paper. And then it heats it up and it seals it, kind of melts it onto that paper. And uh, older printers, older printers, you could actually peel that off or you could heat it up and it would, and it would um, flake off. So these, these fusing rolls um, in bigger uh, corporate printers, you have to replace them after a while. Um, in these consumer printers, um, and maybe it's, this, it's the way that these modern printers are made, they're not replaceable. It's just expected that when it stops fusing, the whole unit, the whole printer should be replaced. Um, 20 years ago, these fuser rolls were about $180 to $350. This printer wasn't even half that. So it's an expendable printer when that part goes out. Some plastic, steel housing. Okay, so here's our motor. It's not that small, actually. It's bigger than I expected it to be. We've got some ribbon cables. There's gonna be a circuit on this side as well, and it looks like there's another circuit down inside. So let's pull this apart and see what's going on. So one screw right here for the motor. Let's see what's keeping that motor on. We've got a few screws right there. We've got what looks like a tensioner. Let's take the tensioner off. Doesn't look much unlike a tensioner in your car. Yeah, and now there's no tension on that wire. It's just a tensioner. And we drop the motor. Pretty nice little motor. We'll set that off to the side and save that. Okay, before I crack into this, it is warning us that there's a laser in here. Okay, so just know before you tear into something, when you see a label, don't just ignore it. A lot of times when you're in a computer and you see a label like this, it usually has to do with electric shock or heat. Um, in this case, there is a laser. Um, now that this is not under power, this laser is not gonna be a concern. Um, it talks about laser radiation. All right. So it's got two points where there's optics that go out and down. I'm not sure what it reads. I'd have to do some research on that. But then there's another optic sensor here. That actually looks like that's where the, the laser is sent out. What this looks like is as this spins, the laser will hit this mirror and reflect out, back out. I'm not exactly sure the, the point of all this. Seems to be a bit random, but you've got your mirror that spins and the laser shot out. And as it gets collected by this piece of plastic, it then transmits that light back out. This was this way, right? I don't know where that light goes. Very interesting, but there you have it. 
hence the name laser printer. As it is connected to the laser right through there, if I pull it up, I can, it'll sever the connection. So let's, let's try to pry it carefully from the back. Try to have it lift the laser. I got the laser to come out. So there's our laser. And that at least looks like it's gold plated. And some sensor here. There's our, our laser. It's a 3.3, either version or volt. It probably is the voltage. There's some MLCCs, but these don't look like high quality components on here either. That laser might be, but I don't know. We have stripped all the non um, steel housing off. There's a few miscellaneous wires running around. So to be honest, it was a little bit disappointing. Um, that'll probably be the last printer I take apart. It's just not worth the time. Um, the steel may be maybe 10 cents worth of steel or less, two cents worth of steel. Steel really isn't selling right now. Um, the copper, it was a bit of copper but there's still a lot of energy to be spent to get that copper out from the transformers, from the motors. Um, I don't have anybody that buys copper bearing motors from me. For me, I'd rather um, melt the copper down from those motors, but there's still a lot of time for me to have to go through each and every one of those and either unwind it or crush it. And I end up with the, the iron powder that comes out of those transformers. Um, it's really not that uh, profitable a venture. Um, I think the most interesting thing that I got out of this was the, um, the paper feed motor um, for it to run those little plastic components that could dry out. It's not gonna be that weak of a motor. So I'm kind of excited for reclaiming that. Um, I don't have a use for a motor like that right now, but it's nice to have in case I ever do. From the perspective of precious metals, there weren't any. I was expecting more pins or more something, but there just weren't any. Um, the laser is kind of interesting. That might have some gold plating on it, but to be totally honest, I'd have to do a lot more research just to figure out what I have there. As part of this tear apart series, this is probably the lowest, uh, the lowest excitement that I have had so far. Soon, now that, uh, now that the rain has cleared up, we're going to start melting stuff again. I've got a new batch of copper that, uh, I am excited to melt. Um, so I look forward to getting back to heating up the forge outdoors again. So please leave me a comment. If there is something that you'd like to see me take apart, if it's a request, I'd be happy to do it. Even if it's just like this printer and it was a pain and not worth it. But if there's something you'd like to see me do, I'll do it. Um, just know that it may be the last time I do it. Um, okay, please drop a comment, like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.